my name is Jara and today I'll be performing a nursing skill called the caring for patient receiving the epidural anesthesia. So for this kind of procedure, I would gather my equipments. Uh, for my equipments, I'll be using the volume infusion device um, that's provided by the facility, um, the epidural infusion tubing. So assuming this is my epidural tubing and then the um, epidural an analgesic solution. So assuming this is my epidural anesthetic solution and um, the CMAR or the MAR record, um, it's the computerized medication administration record and then your pain assessment tool, um, usually the facility also provide this, um, you know, there's a pain level here, um, you could um, check with your patient what their pain level is, zero means no pain and then 10 means excruciating pain. So just show this to them, then you can let them point into it. Um, that way you could assess their pain and then um, some labels for your epidural infusion line so usually you just um, tape it on the um, lines um, for your infusion and then um, some tape um, just so you could um, provide secure the catheter and the kit um, and then you would like to get your emergency dressing um, or emergency uh, drugs. Um, so for your emergency drugs, it's usually naloxone because this is the, um, it could reverse the effects of respiratory um, depression. So um, you would like to get that ready with a syringe. And then you would like to get your oxygen cannula. Usually you hook this up in the wall. Um, if you're working in a facility that has oxygen on the wall, and then um, you would get your endotracheal um, device or the endotracheal intubation set just assuming this is my kit and then um, any handheld um, resuscitation bag um, just in case you know there's any emergency you have that ready for you and then you would get your non-sterile gloves or your clean gloves and then some additional PPE if needed so for my implementation I would like to verify in my chart so check your chart um, what would be the doctor's order, what was the original doctor's order or the medication order that was listed from the chart. Um, you would like to um, verify everything, clarify any inconsistencies, and um, you know, you would like to also check for any allergies when you're doing, before you do this procedure. That way, um, you know that you're not gonna cause any allergies for the patient. And then um, you would like to know your special nursing consideration, the uh, safe dosage of this medication, the range, the purpose, the adverse effects or adverse reaction of the medication. And then um, you, you would like to know also if this medication is even considered um, appropriate for this patient. So um, you would like to check all of that and verify um, based on your assessment. And then um, you would like to prepare all the medication. Um, that way it's already here and um, the doctor will be um, Will have you'll have it ready for the doctor, so it's easier for them to, um, you know, access all this medication, um, and then just verify all your medication, especially when you're, um, you know, administering it. Just you know, check, recheck, and then you know, verify again. You can get another coworker to verify this with you. Um, that way, everything is consistent. And then you would like to perform your hand hygiene technique. So wash your hand, do your hand hygiene technique, proper hand hygiene technique, dry your hands. Um, that way you don't um, cross contaminate and um, spread the microorganisms um, to the patient. And you would like to identify your patient um, using two identifiers, full name and date of birth. So check that on their band and also check with them verbally um, what's their full name and their date of birth. And then um, just you know show show the patient the device that you're going to be using so you want to let them get prepared for this procedure um you know you can explain to them what are you doing the purpose of this procedure and um you know what kind of equipments and um, the reason for this procedure that way they're more comfortable um you know you could reduce some apprehension or anxiety um especially uh, this procedure is um a little bit um, uncomfortable so you would like to get them prepared when you're doing this before you even do this procedure with the doctor so um and then after that you would like to obtain some privacy to the patient um so close the door close the windows um that way the patient's more comfortable when before doing this procedure and during during this doing the procedure because you're going to be exposing some body parts you would you want to maintain some privacy for them 
and then um, just check and assess um, you know the necessary um, items procedures um, medication that you need for this procedure check any allergies and then um, just assess if there's any pain um, just you know um, just for your record just assess all the pains that's listed and then put on your gloves um, when you're doing this procedure so after you put on your gloves um, you would like to get the ampule of 0.4 naloxone with a syringe ready at the bedside that way um, it's ready for the doctor to um, to take um, just in case um, there's any um, just so you could reverse the respiratory depression so this uh, medication is to reverse the um, respiratory depression and then um, after the catheter after the doctor or the anesthesiologist or radiologist um, inserted the catheter in the um, you know in the appropriate site um, and then the infusion is anesthesi um, initiated by the anesthesiologist um, you would like to check the label for the rate of infusion with medication record and um, the identif the identity of the patient so verify and check everything um, based on whatever is listed in the chart and also the uh, rate of infusion with the medication record so just verify on that one so um, assuming this is my patient um, you would like to get your tape and then tape all the connections of the tubing that way it doesn't get disconnected um, or dislodged even if the patient moves so get your tape and then tape all the necessary connections and then get your label um, so for your label it will say um, you know for epidural infusion use only um, just ma make sure that you wrap it around the tubing just um, all the connections you would like to label it with that um, that way they don't get confused that um, you know they could put any other medications on this um, line so um, this is only um, exclusively for the epidural um, infusion unless it's um, indicated by the responsible anesthesiologist so just check on that one just make sure that you label it all and then get your transparent dressing and then put it on the um if just in case the anesthesiology did not put the dressing yet so you would like to prepare that for um this patient so put on your dressing on the egg um on the site and then just you know um, make sure that the catheter is not in is not dislodged um, you know before you do this procedure and then take off your gloves or, and also the PPE that you use if needed and then um, just toss it on the proper receptacle and then um, just make sure that you monitor the infusion rate according to the policy of the facility and then um, you you would like to also assess and record the sedation and the respiratory depth or the respiratory status every hour for the first 24 hours um, after doing the epidural infusion and then after that you could uh, monitor it every four hours um the reason um the reason you're doing this because um sometimes opioids um, cause respiratory depression and um, it could also alter the level of consciousness and um, you know one of this sign is the altered respiratory function so you would like to notify the physician if the sedation is um, if the sedation rating is uh, around three or four and if the respiratory de depth de decreases with the respiratory rate if it falls below um, 10 beats per minute so you would like to notify the physician immediately so assuming this is my female patient um, um, just prepare their bed for them and elevate their head about 30 degrees angulation um, just make sure that the, that um, position is not contraindicated for them uh, the reason for this is because um, you don't want the opioids going to the um, epidural um, or the spinal cord um, that reaches to the brain um, that will help um, minimize uh, respiratory depression as well and then um, you would like to assess your patient's pain level um, and if there's any pain relief, um, relief of pain, so check, um, get your assessment tool, um, see what's their pain level here, and then check with them um, if there's any relief um, going on um, after this infusion um, had been administered to them. And then um, you would like to also check and monitor their urinary output, check with them if they have um, went to the bathroom, uh, urinated, and um, 
um, check on their bladder if it was distended it's probably they haven't been to the bathroom so you know like assist them to um, urinate and just monitor the output of the uh, fluids and um, after that you would like to also monitor the motor strength um, and the sensations um, um, every four hours because um, the reason why is because the catheter um, migrate into the intrathecal um, space um, sometimes the opioids block the uh, the tr uh, the transmission of the um, the transmission to the nerve endings and then um, from the spinal from the spinal cord to the brain so you would like to assess their motor strength um, just to verify if um, you know um, everything is fine and then you would like to monitor any adverse re adverse reaction or adverse effect um, usually um, if there is some adverse um, effect, um, there is some itching or any nausea or vomiting going on, pruritus. Um, if um, that's the case, um, you know, um, the reason for that is because the opioids um, can um, go to the trigeminal nerve and it can cause the itching or the vomiting or any um, adverse reaction from that medication. So just check and monitor on that one. And then just assess the, any sign of infection on the um, site of, um, uh, uh, of the epidural site. Uh, and then, um, you know, just check and see if there's any drainage or anything like that. Um, if you need to change the dressing, just change it very carefully. Just make sure that you don't um, dislodge the, the catheter that's inserted there. And then, um, you know, just assess every uh, 24 to 48 hours uh, the catheter or the exit site. Um, that way, um, you know that um, everything is fine, everything is intact. And then... Um, just change the infusion tubing every 48 hours um, using the septic technique, of course. And then after that, you would like to evaluate and see if the patient's getting relief from the medication. Um, you were su successfully, um, you know, you've successfully cared for this patient after receiving the, um, the analgesic, the epidural an analgesic solution and then documents all your findings so um, the equipment that you used um, that you prepared for the doctor all the um, dosages the rate of flow um, and you know the, all the necessary um, results or findings and equipment and assessment that you've done for this patient so that will end my um, my clinical assessment and um, my nursing skill demo thank you and have a good day